In this lesson, we take a deeper dive into information asset classification. Information assets store, process, or handle data in some way. They not only have inherent value, but they are likely necessary to perform business critical functions, or CBFs. They include servers, user devices, databases, storage media, email, office documents, and paper-based records. Classifying assets has many benefits, including ensuring an accurate asset inventory, insight into the operating environment, optimization of vulnerability and patch management programs, more effective security safeguards, identification of rogue assets, understanding of all risks, and identifying and filling compliance gaps. The asset classification process consists of three steps. First, the information assets are inventoried and the critical business functions they support are identified. The asset owners are then identified. This includes documenting the data, critical business functions, and system owners, as well as other stakeholders. The final step is to classify each asset based on its sensitivity and its criticality to the organization. There are two ways to arrive at the appropriate classification for an information asset, quantitative and qualitative. This is the most common formula for quantitative analysis. During asset classification, it determines the expected annual loss associated with the potential compromise, theft, or destruction of an asset or an incident. This is represented by the ALE value. The SLE value is the expected loss from one incident. The ARO has how often the organization expects an incident to occur. For example, if an incident is expected to occur every five years, the ARO is 0 0.2. In this example, the SLE is $10,000. The expected frequency of incident occurrence is every 10 years. Dividing 1 by 10 gives us an ARO of 0 0.1. Multiplying the SLE by the ARO provides annual loss expectancy of $1,000. The ALE is important when determining how to manage risk associated with the asset. If the annual cost of the controls needed to mitigate or transfer the risk is higher than the ALE, the asset owner is likely to accept the risk. Quantitative analysis is more accurate, but it requires much more effort than qualitative assessments. Many, if not most, business management teams are not going to spend the time needed to calculate the dollar values for SLEs for all information assets. This is why qualitative assessments are popular. Qualitative assessments are less accurate but are much easier to perform. Assessors use value ranges or high, medium, or low values to establish asset risk. The accuracy of this approach depends on the expertise of the assessor and the depth of experience of the business participants. This is an example of a qualitative risk matrix. It assesses the probability of a compromising incident and the impact of that incident. A more detailed assessment method is needed for assessing human threat risk. It is found in the data classification and categorization video lesson. The advantages of using quantitative assessments include their objectiveness. Calculating actual dollar numbers tends to reduce personal gut feelings. When done correctly, this approach is credible and aligned with financial risk considerations. The disadvantage of quantitative assessments begin with the complexity of the approach. Determining all the costs associated with information asset compromise is not easy and requires significant time. If not done correctly, the numbers can result in a false sense of accuracy. Finally, the results may not be considered trustworthy because of the complexity involved. The advantages of using qualitative assessments include the more probable steps management is likely to use to value assets. The measurements are easy to explain and they are accurate enough if the right people do the assessments. 
The main disadvantage of qualitative assessments also tends to lie with the assessors. It is subjective. If the right people are not selected, assets can be over or under assessed. This is an example of how to classify systems. There are many ways to approach this. Each organization must use the asset classification scheme that works best for it. Data classification and categorization are different but similar processes. Please review the data classification and categorization lesson shown in the upper right. System classifications are needed for effective business continuity planning. That's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.